Mm -hmm. uh, my father opened a business in 24, and she came along uh, uh, a few, few, quite a few years after that. But uh, back then, it was um, uh, the I'm pretty sure the funeral business also ran an ambulance business, and I think the funeral homes were like responsible for ambulance calls. That's kind of conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. He worked for Goldfinch for a while mm -hmm. as an embalmer. Mm -hmm. That was a white funeral home here in Conway. That's how you got and um, that's how, where he did his, like apprenticeship and training. And then later he decided to open his own business because there was no black funeral home in the area. So this was the first black funeral home. Yeah, starting your own business back in the 20s was um, you know tough, you know, especially for uh, blacks, African Americans uh, back then. Um, he was able to build a business back when you know people were being lynched and that type of thing. So uh, back in 1924, the, the, for a black person to have your own business and be independent of it, everybody was um, that was pretty rare. But my mom has kept everything going because my father died back in uh, the early 80s, and you know a lot of people could have given up, but she kept going and you know raised two two guys and kept the business going. So she's really the heart of it, and if it wasn't for her. It wouldn't be at this, this situation here, you know, because she's got 50 years in business. You know, when most people retire after 20 years, she's been working 50 years. Kind of, we grew up in the business. You know, this was kind of like um, what we do, and um, that wasn't really fun, you know, hanging around the funeral home. But that was just kind of part of business. That, so that, that's kind of how we were raised up. Business first, and the business was important. And, you know, you know, our family just kind of. Well, mom and dad instilled that in us from an early age to work and you know and to uh, make sure you honor the community and that type of thing. Well, it's just uh, it means it, it gives back. And uh, we talked to so many people who said my father buried their grandfather years and years ago, and it meant a lot to them. And my father, um, they didn't have any money back then, and they gave him like back then all the some of the farmers all they had was collars. Uh, pigs or stuff like that and they would just kind of give him that until they could you know take payments and that type of stuff and it meant a lot to him uh, to them though you know because they he kind of worked along with them back there in the day. People saying that our father buried their grandfathers and whatever else there's just a history of knowing that you know this was one of the places that was a, was a landmark in the community where you know a lot of their relatives were funeralized. And, and, uh, right after his father died he told me that he was going to come in, take, come into the business, and he did. Who told you that? You did. You certainly did. I was under duress. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> yeah, you did. And uh, he said he was not going to. Uh, and he just started other ways, trying to go this way, that way, and. He decided he would come in too. So uh, I really appreciate that. Really? I really do. You know okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. A, lot, a lot of history is unrecorded, to be honest with you, especially back, back in those times. A lot of black histories wasn't recorded. So that's why it's kind of you know, um, important to kind of you know, keep that going and kind of remind the, this current generation what what happened before them.